This one I'm painting white, so drizzled the paint on and just went to work. I took this gold glitter and while the paint was still wet, poured it right on top of the pumpkin, allowing pieces of it to drip down to create a cascade effect. I got this spray adhesive to seal in that first layer and then added more glitter on top of that. On to the second pumpkin which I also decided to paint white. I'm putting polka dots on this one so I used a roll of tape to create the stencil for the circles. I then drew the circles on randomly around the pumpkin. out my glue and a little paintbrush and painted the glue on in each circle. Next I sprinkled this iridescent blue glitter on each glue spot and then shook it off and it was done. For the last pumpkin, I went with this bolder red color just to do something completely different. And this paint is actually gloss paint, so I'm gluing these gold sequins in rows down the sides of the pumpkin. I then use the spray adhesive again to glue the remaining sequins to the top of the pumpkin to cover the stem which was already falling off and it just gave it its own unique look. Thanks for watching and so first you're going to crack your eggs and put four of them into a bowl then add one and two thirds cup of sugar next you're going to add one cup of vegetable oil then a smaller can of pumpkin so there's comes in two sizes the big can the smaller can. You're going to add the smaller can which is about 15 ounces and just put that all in with the rest of it. Then mix it really well. So then you're going to add your two cups of flour and two teaspoons of baking powder. Now these are your dry ingredients. You can sift them all together but I just throw them in. And then just one teaspoon of baking soda. Then I have my cinnamon, so it's two teaspoons of ground cinnamon and then just one teaspoon of salt. You don't have to use the whole teaspoon, I did about half a teaspoon. Then mix it really well. 
Then I have a 9 by 13 pan that I'm going to spray with cooking spray and then just dump your batter into the pan. Then spread it around so it's pretty even and then you're going to stick it in the oven at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. Once you're all done baking it, you're going to take the other end of a wooden spoon or a fork and poke holes in it. I like the bigger holes because then when I drizzle my caramel on top, um, it seeps into this cake a little bit better. Then spread the caramel around the best you can, getting it into the little holes. Now let's make the frosting. So I have a container of Cool Whip, and I use the whole entire container. Next I use cream cheese. I use not the fat-free kind because it mixes a little bit better. Then just add two cups of powdered sugar and mix it with your beaters. Mix it for about two minutes till it's nice and smooth. Then you're just going to put it on top. You want to make sure that your cake is pretty much cooled when you do this or else it will melt down into the holes with the caramel. And then just spread it around the best that you can. Then I like to put crushed pecans on top along with a little caramel drizzle as you're serving each individual piece. Hey, thanks for stopping by today.